I never got a notification from the last time we went live. <clears throat> oh, now I've gotten it. Yeah. Okay. It's all it says we are live. Oh, live chat. I like how it's like a minute behind now. What is going live? Yeah. So if you watch the chats, it's. It used to be like five or 10 seconds behind. It's probably 30 seconds behind now. There it is. Hello, Meg. Hi, Liz. Hello, Meg. Congratulations, Meg, on getting on fairy hugs. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Chris Lynn. Hi, Chow. Um, I need to Hi, turn Daddy. off that one. Hi, Michelle. I don't think I have any other black and white paper. I found some old stuff in my stash. I don't know if it's going to foil or not, but I mean, I don't game. think I have, I mean, yeah, I don't have a black and white paper pack like I do with this one. So I have a few. I'm going to have to cut this down. Hello, Stephanie. Hi, Irene. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Sally. Hey, Suzette, Maureen, Judy, Mary, everybody's jumping on. Hi, Shalon. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Mary. Hey, Sherry D. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We have a special guest oh. tonight. <laughs> Are you oh, me? Is that what you're talking to me? I'm the special guest. Have we, done a, we haven't done a live together in a really long time. It's been a long time. Like we have, yeah, it's been a long what time. There's Lee. Hello, darling. Hey, Lee. So this is, are any of yours double-sided, the black and white paper you have? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, mine too. So that'll be a good um, thing um, to show people. I might show a little secret purchase I made. I'm debating it. We'll see. Let me do this. This is really That's heavy. very pretty. I'll we'll do this one. Some of these make me really walk, walk. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Mm. I just, yeah. Give me motion sickness. Is that the word? Something like that. Oh, um, like, like, um, dizzy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. A lot. Oh, this one's good. Okay. I'll do this one. Like hypnotic -y print. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I that can't look, look at cool. it. That would look cool. Is that foils with the crafty Krita hexagon foil? I have that. Let me, oh. let me get that out. I got to get my foils out. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Truly blessed. Hi, Irene. Hi, Katie. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Denise. Hi, Susan. I think I said hi to most everybody. Already. I, I don't want to miss anybody. Mary says she has some old black and white paper from Stampin' Up. Well, Mary, oh, get it froze. out and soil along with us. Oh, there you go. You were frozen. Soil it. Hey. All right. I'm going to give you guys a little background here. So as you know, there are products you can purchase or make yourself and foil. So if any of you are familiar with the old Creative Vision Stamps foilables, they were the only company that I will call foilables. That's Creative Vision Stamps. They made high quality toner printed images that foiled beautifully. However, the owner of that company did retire in May. So there are no longer any foilables. All right. So we have been looking for some companies that sell uh, foil art toner printed products. And uh, my number one company to go to for those products is Crafty Krita. They are in Australia, but they have beautiful designs. They have high quality toner printed images um, or print yourself. And Stacy did do a video on if you want to download and print yourself, you must print from a laser printer. So then I get asked all the time, can I print these from my inkjet and foil them? The answer is no, it will not work because inkjet is like dye ink. So when the ink goes into the paper, it soaks into the paper just like dye ink does, where toner printed images, the toner sits on top of the paper. It's basically a um, pulverized plastic. And so once it sits on top of the paper, it dries, it goes through a drying process. And then you have that nice, crisp, dark black ink on top of the paper. Well, what happens when you put that through a heat source, like a laminator or a mink machine, 
is it reactivates it, makes it sticky, and then the foil sticks to it. And then when it cools down, you can reveal the foil by taking off the top clear carrier sheet and the foil stays behind stuck to the toner. So yes, you must have laser printed images. Um, I'm also going to say that Stacy and I are both going to be using minks. She's gonna be using mama mink. I'm gonna be using the little mink. I know a lot of you are trying to do foiling with laminators. We will always recommend a mink. The minks are made for foiling. They get much hotter, they get hotter quicker, they stay hot and they have two rollers, which gives you pressure. And those are the secrets to foiling is it must be super hot and you must have pressure. So some laminators, laminators do work okay. I do have a video on using a $20 laminator for foiling. Um, I do not recommend spending $60, $70, $80 or more on a laminator. I think that's just a waste of your money. And um, I do not recommend at this time using any other foiling machine other than the mink. Um, I've heard that the laminator is basically a glorified laminator. I have not tried that, but... I've not heard anybody tell me that it has as good a results as the mink. So with the mink, I think you're going to have the best coverage. Um, it's going to be smoother on your foiling. Like I said, it's going to be hotter and it's going to give you pressure. So other companies that make toner printed designs are Miss Heidi Swap herself. So you can find these in 12 by 12 and six by six images. And they are high quality. You can pick these up at your big box stores or pick them up at Amazon. Um, but they're black and white printed and you can foil those. Also, we have companies like ThermoWeb and Unity that make uh, toner printed images. Um, so if you're not going to print them yourself, you can purchase from these companies. But the way that I look at it is value is you get um, eight sheets and they're beautiful. Obviously I wouldn't buy them if they weren't beautiful. Um, however, these are, I want to say five or six dollars for eight card front sizes. So we want to give you another option here. And you might already have some of these black and white papers in your stash that the manufacturer has laser printed. So we're going to try out what we have in our stash. Will it foil? Won't it foil? Stick around and find out. Stacey, you want to add anything to that before we go hands down? No, you covered it. Good job. Okay. If you guys have any questions, don't forget to ask in the chat and we will be checking that. I have my little phone over here and we'll try to answer them as we go. Okay. Let's go hands down. <clears throat> and I have my mini mink and I've covered my mini mink in beautiful Arteza um, holographic, beautiful, um, Final and it has not peeled or anything. I love it. It doesn't look like a plain old mink anymore. Look at that beautiful logo. Ooh, I like your wood grain table. Isn't that nice? Oh, here, let me move it down so you can't see my actual table. <laughs> Hi, Connie. Hi, Amalia. Hi, Cindy. Happy birthday, Cindy. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Kim. Hi, Karen. And here's my little black and white stash. Hmm. Hold on, I got to reach my mink. Plugged in. Oh, the cord's all wrapped. And I'm going to be using all kinds of different foils in my stash. So I have Checo foil, Crafty Crita foil, Mink foil, Creative Vision. That doesn't matter in this case. As long as it's toner or mink foil, do not use hot foil. Hot foiling is a completely different application. It runs on a different machine. So you do not want to use We Are Memory Keepers foil, Quill foil. You do not want to use Cricut foil. You do not want to use Spellbinders Glimmer Foil, Gemini Foil Press Foil, or Toto Foils. Those foils are hot foils, okay? Not to be confused with heat-activated foils. <laughs> I know that's very confusing, believe me. But these are toner slash mink slash textile foils. Look at Big Mama Mink there. <laughs> Hi, Kaifira. She loves, Jerry loves the pink on my mini mink. Yes, it's a pink mink. Pink me. <clears throat> Are we using Thank you, foil too? Yeah, use whatever foil you got because all we want to know is is it going to stick? Yeah, because I have hexagon and H and H. I thought I had it cool. in crafty, but I don't. But that's that works. That's okay. And so I'm going to get. Oh, and we'll also be showing you how to foil double sided. And yes. unfortunately, I mean, I guess I could double foil it. Good. I could just fold this over. We could try yep. that, but otherwise um, just 
FYI, so what you would do is I have just a plain piece of copy paper here. So if I were to put this through with the carrier sheet, whatever side I'm not foiling, I would want to put the copy paper up against it because this is going to melt and it's going to get on your carrier sheet or it'll just get on this paper. So I'd rather it get on the paper than my carrier sheet. Yeah, so I'm also going to do the same thing. And what's that brand of paper that you're showing in case they want to look it up and see if they have it on their stash? So this is actually an Amazon black and white paper. So let me find the link really quick and send it to Chow. Um, yeah, I don't know if she's on. Yeah, she is. Okay. She's being quiet. No, she's not. She was chatting. All right. So I'm going to show you guys, if you haven't seen, I've used this many times for foiling. This is the all to new essential black and white paper pack. And you can see I foiled the cover sheet. So um, this is also double-sided paper, and I do it a little differently than Stacy does it, but both ways will work. So again, keeping the science in your back of your mind here, all of everything that's black here will get foiled. And that's because when it gets heated up through the machine, it melts, and then the foil sticks to it. So if we put this through our paper carrier sheet or our plastic to uh, carrier sheets, now these are specially designed for the mink and I foil this side of it, then the back side, all of that that's turned black will stick to my black carrier sheet. It's not a bad thing we can get it off. It's just super ugly and annoying, right? It so, will transfer though. Yes, it will, it transfer. will transfer. Right. So Stacy's going to use a piece of foil on one side and she's using her paper to basically grab the other side. One of the tricks that I learned um, is that you can use the front side of your waste foil. So this is a piece of foil I used previously. Oh, that's and I right. didn't throw away. I kept it. So instead of using the foil side, I'm going to use the front side. It won't stick to this front side. Now, if I use this side, it will stick to my image, which will be pretty cool, but I don't want to waste that. So I'm going to stick down the side. I don't want to foil colored side onto there. I'm actually going to fold over my, try and fold over my foil and foil both sides. Oh. She's going to do double foiling and then I've she never can decide which one she likes. Yeah. Move all my papers out of the way. Also, don't forget when you're foiling to dusty, 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 dusty. dusty, dusty. <laughs> okay, let's try this. I need a carrier. You always want to do the seam side first. And what temperature do you have your mama mink at? I have it on four, but I think I yep. want to put it up to a five. I'm not sure. Depends on how thick your paper is. Not very thick. Chow, I sent you the link in the- Hi, Charlene. Oh, she got it. So I'm pretty sure that she just linked it, the paper that okay. I'm using. I'm not oh, going to say this paper is great. I have foiled it before. It foils, but it's not FSC quality as far as I'm concerned, but it is, it is, I mean, it's good. We are a little snobby when it comes to our foiling, aren't we? Yeah, there's better alternatives. I'll just say that. But for the price, I think it's, it's, it's okay. Um, so it's, is it big eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper or is it um, six 12 by, by 12. six? What? Oh, so it's big paper. Okay, yeah, so you're getting a lot it. of it. Yeah. Okay. This okay, is it right cool. here. And it's, um, hold on, let me find the little piece of paper that's in here. This is the cover page. There it is. So it's a scrapbook, customs, black and white, six double-sided papers, two each, so 12 patterns. So this is right. one. Well, before you guys go shopping, let's see if it will foil. Yes, let's, I think I'm good. And everything's covered and it's okay if stuff hangs out on the ends or even off to the edge a little bit like I've got a little bit hanging out over here it's okay it's not going to cause any problems I'm doing one side of the alternate and I'm using waste foil to protect the other side so it does not foil so I'm the doing the new black and white paper does foil beautifully Okay. 
Yes, make sure you are on live chat so you can read everyone's comments and questions so you don't think we're crazy talking to ourselves. Thanks, I wasn't on live chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. And if you are new to foiling, we do recommend that you join our Foiling Snobs Club on Facebook. There are a few questions that we do ask before you join to try to make sure you're not a bot. Um, we don't do any selling in our group, but we do encourage all kinds of creativity and we answer all kinds of questions, not just foiling questions. All right, and we're gonna let this cool down. So this is my waist side. So you'll see when I take my foil off of here, it should not have stuck. Yeah, I'm going to put this through again on a higher temperature because this one side is very fine lines and it doesn't look like it really yeah. grabbed. So the you can see this is, like this is my back side of my Altenew paper and this is the side I did not foil. You can see it's perfectly black. I can still use my piece of foil on another project and I don't have any of that on my um, transfer folder. So now is the pretty side that we want to see. This is mink foil. This is called silver squares. That's pretty. It is pretty. I just wish it wasn't so expensive. All right, here we go. We're gonna reveal. You wanna let it cool. And then like I told you guys, all to new paper foils, gorgeous. And Ooh. I know it's hard for you guys to see cause it's very fine little lines in there and the square foil on top of it. That might be a little over, <laughs> over dramatic, but it's cool looking. That looks and then very I have cool. this piece left over and I can save this and foil this on a piece of toner paper. So all to new black and white paper pack, if you have it. Yes, it foils beautifully. I love this paper. I love the designs in it. Now I only have this one. What I do with it? I lost it already. <laughs> oh, here oh, it is. I only have this one pack. I know that they have other black and white paper, but this is the black and white paper pack, 24 sheets, six by six. I do have an all to new link. If you are interested in looking at this later on, I would appreciate you if you use that. And it does, it's 80 pounds, so it's pretty heavy and it is double-sided. So you get dots, squares, stripes, all kinds of stuff. All right, let me so see what this did here. So we've got, this is going to be the fine line side. So there's two sides to this paper. It's this paper right here. So there's the hexagon side. And then there's also this little wonky 3D square looking side. So I think this side is the one that was having the most problem because of such fine lines. So we'll do that side first. And yeah, it didn't really do very well at all. It's some, it's kind of there. I mean, you can see it. It definitely, it's usable. It's definitely usable. It's just not, not as, a heavy layer of toner no. when they printed it. I mean, I can still see some black through it for sure. And if you look at the, the waste foil, you can see that it's not clean lines, which tells me that basically it was not a clean foil. Okay. And then this side is the hexagon side. And so, yeah, there's definitely, this is much better actually. Ooh, that looks pretty. Probably because it's thicker toner. Whenever you guys yeah. have fine lines, it's very hard to foil mm -hmm. fine lines. I mean, I can still see some black marks, but those are, it's not as bad. And there's definitely easy to cover up with like, you know, sentiments or other stuff, but, or just to have this in the background. It looks pretty cool though. This is so. Bow Bunny's tuxedos and tiaras black and white paper pad i don't believe this will foil it is very pretty paper it's kind of bohemian um if you like grungy if you are interested in getting this paper i got it off of scrapbook.com and i do have a scrapbook.com link um this is very recent that i got this just for testing it out so i'm just gonna grab a piece of the black because um it has the most toner on it this piece right here and we will ask does it foil i don't think this is going to foil and i'm going to take a piece of scrap foil on this one because i don't believe this will foil it feels like it's just regular printer paper it does not feel like it's laser printed it doesn't have like that smooth you can kind of feel laser printing it has a little bit of dimension that you can feel this just feels like regular dye ink printed onto it so i'm just going to put this piece of foil on it and we'll see 
does it boil? I don't believe this one will. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna do double-sided again. I'm gonna use blue hearts this time. Ooh, I like blue hearts. 30. And I did bump my machine up to five. Bigger machine. Usually yes, you have bigger to machine, longer one. rollers. Ooh, this is really pretty paper. It's, it's a game show. Does it foil? <laughs> <laughs> Tracy did order Hamilco paper. Yes, if you're going to be printing from home, obviously you need to have the right settings on your laser printer, but I would also recommend very ultra smooth paper, not glossy photo paper, but glossy regular paper. And so Hamilco paper has been the best paper we found for foiling. And also you're able to do ink blending on it. Yep. All right. So for the bow bunny paper, I believe my suspicions were correct. And it, no, it does not foil. So sorry, bow bunny, beautiful black and white paper, but folks, it does not foil. We're going to put that in the no pile. So for those of you who weren't on the earlier live, we are extending our Stamp Wars 10 video giveaway submissions because Ryan's been moving and so he is um, behind in getting his video up. I don't think Tracy got hers up yet either because she also just redid she's her ill. And she's not feeling good today, yeah. So we will be doing the giveaway announcements next, well, this coming Saturday. And it's also gonna be the Local King Rubber Stamps. Stamp with me. So you guys have an extra week if you haven't watched the videos um, or after Stamp Wars videos, go check those out and make sure you leave a comment so that you can get it entered into those giveaways. Right, let me yes. see if this one, I don't know if I want to put it through one more time. And now, is that the same paper pack or different paper pack? It's the only paper pack I have. Oh, okay. I didn't <laughs> know you only had one. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I have another. I mean, the only you other thing CP I have paper? is. Do you have any black and white CP paper? Uh, no, I don't. No. I only have Christmas. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> All right. So this is the one. This actually turned out pretty good. Same, same results. Not 100%, but definitely usable. And then the other side's a very fine line. So let's see what that looks like. That's kind of cool. That's not bad at all. But to me, not FSC quality, but it's still it's still doable. It's definitely usable. Unlike Bow right. Bunny. <laughs> I mean, yes. Bow Bunny, no. no. No good. Okay, I have this <laughs> black and white paper. I think this will foil. I'm curious to see because there's different... Um, shades of gray on here on if those will foil or just the black will foil. We'll find out. This is called, I'll hold it up here in a second. And I put some yellow foil that our wonderful foiling fairy Carol sent me just so I could see what it looks like with the black and yellow. All right. So this paper is called paper rose black and white plaid. It is, oh shoot. Guess what I forgot to do. It's double-sided. Uh-oh. That side well, is coming. we're going to learn yeah. together on this one. We will um, see if it, yeah. <laughs> there's 18 sheets of double plaid paper. It's, it's pretty heavyweight. It says it's 200 GSM. I guess this is a company in Australia, but they're very beautiful prints as they are. I do believe these are laser printed just because of the quality. I can feel it in there. And I think this will foil beautifully. But now you guys are going to see why you're supposed to cover your foil on both sides and how I clean it up. So a little educational video. I also picked this up at scrapbook.com. All right. So <laughs> let me show you what happens when you let toner touch your folder. You get a really pretty folder. Yeah. You get a, a really nice toner covered. Don't worry. I'll show you how to get that off. So obviously this will foil. Um, let's see how the yellow looks on it. Now this is a translucent foil. I just wanted to see where it would stick. 
So the answer is yes, does it foil? And it only sticks to the black part. So the gray shading in the center is not foiled. So that's pretty cool to know that. So this definitely goes in the yes pile. Now, how you clean your folder, I don't have any in front of me right now, but you use acetone, like fingernail polish remover, but you don't use the kind with any enrichments, no vitamin E or any oils in them. And you just take okay. acetone and wipe this off and it will 100, come clean. 100% pure acetone is what you want. Yeah, 100% <clears throat> pure acetone, correct. Okay, so I found a paper pack. I don't know if this would work or not. It feels like it's got texture to it. Um, it's off-white. It's a cream and black. But, oh, it's double-sided too. Hmm. Let's see. It. Let's try it. Let's try it. Why not? <clears throat> Nancy's got like 5,000 papers to try. I'm like going to try to go quick so that's not so painful. And that's fine. <clears throat> if you right, have I something have... specific you want us to demonstrate, go ahead and throw it in there. And if we miss it, then Chow or Elizabeth can send us a note. Say, hey, you fools miss this. I have this one too, but it's got glitter and stuff on here. There's no pages that aren't glittered. So this is definitely not going to work. Yeah, that's how it works. So I have this piece of Catherine Cooler slim line pattern paper. This is called Little Black Dress. I'm just going to use a piece of my, my little stash foil here. Um, I will say I have tried to foil this paper before and it did not foil so great. I do believe it is laser printed, but it's just not, they don't put it on super thick, kind of like what Stacy showed on her earlier attempt. So this will foil, but it's not the greatest. You'll get a grungy look out of it. I have no idea if this is gonna foil at all, so. Will oh. it foil? <laughs> I already know this isn't the greatest, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in the no pile now. Catherine does have quite a few black and white papers. You're going to have to test them because they're all a little different. So this one is the little black dress slim line pattern paper and it will foil, but it's just really, really grungy. So if you like grungy foiling, hey, go with it. But uh, for me, I like 100% complete foiling. So this goes in my do not foil list. Okay, we're gonna do a fuchsia, ultra pink. I'm just going to do this whole thing. Actually, no. Let me cut this in half because there's two different. Mm. Oh, that's pretty. I got two sides. I think I, let me see. <laughs> yes, new game show. Will it foil? <laughs> and Stacy and I both have a Catherine Puller link. So you can use either one of our links if you're interested in purchasing from Catherine Puller. Yeah. Okay, let's see now right, if I can here do we go. double. I want to let it cool before we reveal it. And here we go. And just like I said, it does foil, but it is the grungy foil. So let me show it to you. Can you see it? Ooh. This is kind of what it looks like when you foil with a laminator. Look at the difference between that foiling and this foiling. See how that's 100% foiled? That's how I like my foil to look. So this gives us a little bit of a grungy look, which is fine. It's okay. Just not what I'm looking for when I foil. Okay. Moving on. All right, this is really old paper. This is, I don't know if this company's still in existence. Boxer Scrapbook, um, classic black and white paper <clears> pad. <throat> I don't think this will foil. So I'm trying this KNC company, KN Company, KN Company um, designer paper. 
That's so. pretty paper. It is pretty paper. It's all just double-sided and it's got just, yeah, it is really pretty paper. Ooh. I have no idea if it's going to foil though. So let's see. Will it foil? <laughs> People are going to be like, shut up, Nancy. I'm tired of you. <clears throat> nope. Nada. Nothing. No foiling. Okay. No. None at all. So put that in the no pile. Be a no pile. How many more and you got? It's also a no for the boxer paper. Oh, like okay. I said, once you do it a couple times, you'll be able to feel your paper and feel the the print, and you'll be able to tell if you think it's going to foil or not. I only have a couple more. Okay. I have this piece of Stampin' Up! Vellum, which is printed on. Now, this is pretty old. I don't know if you're going to find this or not. It was like a freebie thing, I think. Um, but I wanted to see if this vellum will foil. Can't really tell. It's hard <clears throat> to tell because it's on vellum. So let's, let's cut a piece of this beautiful foil here. Is that design on the foil or yeah. on the vellum? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jen, they're saying we need sound effects for our, our game. Oh, oh, what kind of sound effects would you like? Hold on, drum we roll. They want a here drum we roll we whenever go. we do. Yeah. Well, that was appropriate. Yep. <laughs> you know when you're going to reveal, and I will do the drum roll. Well, I'm not revealing anymore. I don't have oh. any more to do. <laughs> okay. Are All we right. going to do the other thing we talked about? Yeah, let me do one more. Okay, then I'll set up for that while you're doing that. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> I want a drum roll for when you do the reveal. All right. So I just bought this out of a whim. I don't remember if it was Tracy Fear. Somebody had mentioned in the group that they had tried foiling, I think, this paper, which is the Bria Reese watercolor resist paper pad. Now, I know it's not laser printed, but this paper definitely has some kind of coating on it. So mm. I was going to try to foil it because why not? Well, do it with clear. That would be cool. Remember? Okay, the vellum from Stampin' Up does not foil. Wah, 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 wah. There we go. All right. So, put that in the no pile. Yes, you can print on vellum with a laser printer. Yes, um, you can. Here. Yes. I have a video somewhere in the archives. Yep. The library of foiling is always open at your leisure. I just did 100 wedding invitations for my friend, and they were all printed on vellum laser printed vellum. <clears throat> I was going to foil it, but the vellum I had did not foil well. So I just gave up and I just did um, just laser printed black on it. All right. Some of these, they even foiled already. I'm just going to cut a little corner here. This one has little hearts on it. Nope. Not going to cut that. Let me cut this one. I just picked this up at Target. Oh, you know what? I don't need to cut it. They have foiling at the very top. See, I don't even have to waste a piece of paper. I can just go like this. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, so this has, I know you guys can't see it, but there are, whoa the um, resist, they have little resist on here so that you can watercolor over this. We're just gonna put that under this piece of foil here. Okay, will it foil? We'll find out. You can also do acetate in, instead of the vellum if you wanted to, Jerry. Mm -hmm. 
You can yep. just buy a pack of acetate for pretty Make cheap. Make sure you are buying laser, laser. printer heat, heat resistant yep. acetate. Yes. <clears throat> I just did that actually. And this is the 100 count clear transparency film. I think it was like anywhere from like around $15, I think maybe for this. And so heck, and then you just print mm -hmm. laser printer, but it is clear. Oh, for laser here we go. <laughs> Watercolor paper does not foil. We tried. Um, okay, I have one more and then I'm done with the foiling. Okay. Um, not this, is a, okay. this is a recollections paper pack. It's called Elegance. I don't know if they still make this or not. I do have little slivers of paper here. I don't believe this will foil, but we want to try what we can try. And I'm just going to keep reusing this little piece of foil. And if it sticks, great. And if it doesn't, well, then we know it doesn't work. So the only ones that did foil for me are the Paper Rose Black and White Plaid and the Altenu Black and White Paper Pack. So those two are definite. Yes, they will foil. They are both double-sided, which is great. You have 24 pages and 18 pages, so you can decide which ones you want to foil. I like and I don't like that because it is a lot of extra work to make sure you're covering the other side. Um, and I, I like the variety of it, but again, I feel like I'm not getting the variety because once I use one side, I can't very well use the other side. So I have a love hate relationship with double-sided paper. Me uh, too. The recollections paper does not foil. So those are the only two that foiled. And you can get these at either alternate, this one at alternate, or you can get both of these at scrapbook.com. If you would like to use my link, I highly appreciate it. Or mine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I forgot you got one. Mm -hmm. You're the only two I have, I think. Scrapbook.com and Catherine Fuller. And this yeah. is on... Amazon in Nancy's. I don't know if it's in Nancy's Amazon shop. I think it is. I think we may it have. No, we'll get it in. No, there. yeah, we will. So just, um, just know that it's not a hundred percent FSC quality, but it is pretty good. It's, it's definitely good. So, okay, we're going to move on to some layered stamping now. Yes. Which one did you decide you want to do? Um, it doesn't matter to me. Well, I'm thinking either my foiling stuff out of the way here. We can do either <clears throat> beach or vineyard. You guys vote. I'll let the people in the group vote. So go ahead and say beach or vineyard, whatever one you want us to do. We're going to be doing the hero skate, <clears throat> layered stamps. do have both of those surprise surprise you know what i don't think i have the lilac one i think is the only one i don't have is it called lilac i think so yes i have I know. no it's uh lavender i think it's lavender okay. is that what you're thinking yeah i, I think have, it's lavender. i have tulips i have sunflowers Sunflower. and i have pumpkins yep i've got the pumpkins too I think and that is then, the only one I don't have is the lavender or lilacs one. I think it's lavender. It's lavender fields. <clears throat> yeah, I'll have that one. I'll put that on my wish list. I mean, if you want, you can do one and I'll do the other. Uh, that way. Is, you think that's what they'll want? Sure. That's a great I idea. Mean, we're kind of getting beach, 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 vineyard, vineyard, vineyard. We're kind of getting both. Okay, we'll do half <laughs> and half. Yeah. Hi, right. Lisa. Um, I'll let you do the beach. You want to do beach? I'll do the vineyard. I guess. Okay, never mind. <laughs> you do the vineyard. I'll do the beach. I'm just, I, I like the ease of the vineyard one because I can see exactly where it lines up. And 
This one's oh, more artistic interpretation. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. I'll do that. Okay. okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Mm-hmm. So I'm using Hero Scapes. I do have Hero the style. Which Stacy yeah. sent me for my birthday. Thank you, Stacy. You're welcome. And she sent me the dies. Cool. So these are high quality photopolymer stamps. And what's nice about these is you really can't mess them up. (laughs) They're super simple to layer. So if you are intimidated by layering stamps, you might want to start with these. It looks like I only have two layers. And then I have some rocks that have two layers each as well. Yeah. that's. So I've got... Let me zoom in a little bit here for you guys. So I've got, can I scooch over so I see me? Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so yeah, so I've got two layers of the beach, basically that. And then, so that's that one and that one. And then I've got two of each rock down here. So you've got these three different rocks. Oh my gosh, that was like almost impossible to get that off of there. Thank God I work out not. <laughs> <laughs> all right <clears throat> let me see what am i gonna use i've not stamped this yet so uh i'm gonna need a little practice here all right here we go Ooh, i think this is uh catherine cooler paper it just feels so smooth mm. all right i think i'm gonna use that too okay so i'm gonna put i mean these are photopolymer stamps so i'm gonna put my i'm using the tim holtz um stamp platform but I always keep it on the rubber side because I just find it's easier to work with this way um with acrylic the photopolymer clear stamps so I don't ever switch it back to clear I always just leave it on rubber and then if I'm doing red rubber stamps I pull this out if I'm not doing rubber stamps I have this little piece of craft foam with a piece of sticky grid on it I know that's a lot but that's what I do (laughs) I'm using mini misty I'm going to figure out what color colors I want. So hmm, this is the hardest part for me is thinking colors. <laughs> okay, well, first of all, I thought so it's easy to start with the lighter colors first. Okay, well, what I'm thinking, oh, see what they did. Okay, what did they do? Because they've got like sand over here. I don't have sand. Now I was thinking I could use craft paper, but then they've got the white. So I can't necessarily do, because then that will shine through. Um, did you get the dyes? I do have the dyes. So, so stamp I guess, oh, on white paper Thank you. and then glue it on craft. I'm going to start with Versamark because I always start with smart. Versamark. <clears throat> you know, I have smart friends that tell me how to fix things all the time. Okay. 20,000 of them. <laughs> all right let's see um i got a jump start today with the stamp with the hummingbirds as my mom's birthday is tomorrow very cool jerry so that's the local king rubber stamps one that yes you're talking about. yes cool. girl oh lisa's on hi lisa yeah, i said hi lisa oh i'm sorry i was in my own little world okay i'm just still trying to figure out what the heck i'm doing um, me too. I'm just grabbing ink and going. Yeah, I need ink. Should I, I'm going to try and just do what the colors they do. So this is like a teal. So we have sea foam. Ooh, would that be appropriate? <laughs> mm, that might work. Sea foam. It's not blue enough, I don't think. I think skylight is more like what I want. Skylight. Oh, there we go. Skylight. And then this blue is like a dark juniper mist. Ooh, let's try it. Who knows? Okay. Yes. Next Saturday is Stamp With Me with Local King Rubber Stamps with the beautiful hummingbird set. So I know a lot of you are excited that you told us you ordered that stamp set and can't wait. So I can't wait either. Okay, another thing I do is I put shipping tape, packing tape over the top, make a hinge. So that when you tear hinge off on the tape. What? Oh, on your, your oops, set. On my set. That's a good idea. Set. So that when I pull it off. Mm-hmm. Come on. Goodness, this is going to be fun getting off. 
I know. That's what I said. Mine was like stuck on big, there too. The big stamps can be, yeah. Okay, so you said do light first. Well, light is the big one. All right, yes, I always go biggest to smallest and I go with the lightest. Now I've cheated on here by using the misty and tucking everything into the bottom right corner. I should theoretically line up pretty evenly here. It looks like these are kind of like hills in the background. So it should, it should line up if I line that up, make sure that I'm all the way against the right side of the mini misty here. I don't know if this is going to work for me, but I'm just going to do it this way. Cause I'm cutting mine out. Cause like when I do what Nancy said in regards to using the die and then cut this out and put it on um, craft stock cardstock so that it looks like sand, you know, a little less work for me. Okay. So this is the skylight. Oh All gosh. Right. My ink pads are very moist. 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 I realize there, there are little spots on my stamp here that I think I need to keep white and so I need to line those up too I think I don't really know I've never used this one before Ooh, a little bit of air bubble make sure it's back in the corner all right I don't know if this is right or not I'm just going by my my first thing stink, which was the line up the top. I'm not worrying about those little spots. Well, it okay. kind of looks like water. It's blotchy, but it'll dry back a little bit. Color number two is first yes. time flare. Green Color Alexis. number two. Oh, totally missed the bottom. Oh, I didn't totally mess that up. Go, Nancy. <laughs> so cool I don't when you so can bad. see through the layers and you're like, that looks cool. Okay, I'm assuming it goes up here. Oh, okay. This is going to be fun. Hold on, guys. I got to like get my head over this because I'm sure these water lines that are in the stamp have to line up to stuff here. Oh, I just got to figure out where. Um, okay. Darlene mm -hmm. just ordered the hummingbird set. That's great, Darlene. You're going to love it. I got to oh, say, Lord. when Lisa said in her video, well, we may be retiring and uh, we may not be traveling this year for the shows. I was like, no, you can't, Lisa. No retiring. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure I have to line this up like the corner of the stamp goes to the corner of the stamp because otherwise, why would they make this a corner? And from looking at the picture, it looks like it's all up there. So I'm going to do that. I don't have that one and I have no idea how to line this one up. You have this one. You just don't, you haven't done it. I've never used it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. I used this one. one <laughs> it looks like this one gets lined up on the bottom and you do line up the little air bubbles, little white spaces. Air bubbles. You don't have air bubbles. No, I well, bubbles. that's what I'm calling them. <laughs> these little white bubbles. Hello, June. June Guzman. Nope. Different June. June M. Hi, June M. Okay. Yeah. This one's green for mist. So this is like a really dark blue. I always forget which green is darker. Oh, not that it matters. I only have three greens. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to use Shady Lane because I think that looks like grapes, grape leaves. That doesn't look bad. Hold it up. That looks pretty good. I mean, it's going to dry back, so it'll be a little bit lighter. But, I mean, it's definitely not like the blue-blue like this is. So I would definitely do a different blue, I think. Because it looks, I don't know, we'll see when it dry ba dries back. But see like how it looks. blue. Yeah, just something that's more blue. And it looks oh. like my line, my, it might not be lined up perfect. Because I think like this right here I should have been up closer. <laughs> This is not lined up correct at all. I just 
just ignore that and try to fix it. Oh, Nancy, we should have done a turnabout stamp. <laughs> no, you can just, you know what? Don't ever talk to me again. <laughs> you evil woman, you. We could have done a turnabout stencil. You got one of those. Yeah. Totally okay. did so... not line this up correctly. When in doubt, bring the color guide over and look at it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I guess I can put some, I'm going to cut this. I'm going to use this as a die cut. So what I can do is I can do some rocks on here too, I guess. So let me clean my stamp real quick. I have no idea how to line this layer up. You'll figure it out. I think it was supposed to go up higher. <laughs> Jen said turnabout stamp. Yes, please. <laughs> Jen, that's it. You're out. <laughs> All right. Let me get some rocks over here. Some boulders. You know what, Jen? Voice, 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 voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was wrong. I think you're supposed to line up the top of this stamp, not the bottom. What am I doing with these colors? Okay. So this is going to be, oh, you know what? I want to do the base first on these. I, I think I want to first. I goobered up. I'm going to flip this paper over and do the back. Although there's schmutz on the back. We'll just ignore that until I figure out how to line this bad boy up. Okay. Back to layer number one. Welcome to my show. This is where <laughs> editing comes in handy. Nancy Wait. doesn't edit. Now I was just going to say that. Nancy doesn't edit. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy makes mistakes, and so you guys can learn with her. That's right. I did say this was easy layering. Shoot me now. Just kidding. Once you do it one time and you figure it out, then it yes, is. for sure. The first Not time, for is sure, annoying. giving you the beach one. This would be the easier one. <laughs> Clearly, I was wrong. Well, mine's more forgiving, apparently, because mine, my water is not lined up perfectly, but it still looks okay. So, you know, it doesn't, it's not a hot mess like yours is. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hi, Linda from <laughs> Rhode Island. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay. So I'm going to do over coffee and sandcastle. Although actually, um, cause I'm trying to get the, the bolder look. So these boulders. So let me see here. Like how the title is black and white paper. Will it foil? And people are jumping in and we're doing hero art stamps. They're going to be like, what is going on? We did do black and white. Will it foil? We got bored. So we switched to hero. Stacy only had like two different papers to try. So, you know, I'm sorry. Sorry. Not sorry. You should change the title. <laughs> Someday. Maybe if this gets me a lot of clicks, I'll leave it on as clickbait. Ooh, you know, that video I did a lot, was it two weekends ago where I said about, um, you know, upcoming things and scammers mm -hmm. that video has like 5,000 views because of it saying scammers. I'm like, really people, it's really not that interesting. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. All right. Let me, Hmm. I wonder. Uh, you guys didn't tell me that my head was in the way. You guys got to say, Nancy, get your fat head out of the way. Well, your head's always in the way most of the time when it comes I to know. these types of stamps. Let's see. I have a dark. Ooh, let me try this. I'm going to try and stamp the second layer on that. <clears throat> yes, Karen, we are quite feisty today. What? No. This is our normal. <laughs> yeah, this is us normally. You guys just don't get to see it. No. How does it feel to know that I am kicking your butt in Stamp Wars voting right now? Oh, man. Why did you have to say that? <sighs> you are kicking my... I well, said that the other I day. I can't I'm say like... it to Tracy because she doesn't feel good and it was her birthday. So I got to take it up with you. Both of you are beating me. I've got bumped down to third. So, you know... Well, it's because she went purple. <laughs> She, she used the Ryan trick and went purple. Apparently, if you make a purple card, that's like instant votes. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that next time. <laughs> People love the well, potential you're, you're of drama. next time. 
Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. So well. even if you did win, it wouldn't matter anyway. Nope. That's true. All okay. Right. I got to move this over so I can line this up. I think I found my mistake. So instead of lining this up at the bottom, I believe layer number three gets lined up towards the top. Okay, I really hate when my fingernails stick to the stupid stamp. Me too. Okay, I'm going to fix this problem. So what you do is you get a piece of, I don't know if acetate would work. I mean, I guess this is acetate. Let me just get a clear, clear, clear piece of acetate. But, 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 but what? Come on. Where's the picture at? I'm confused. Okay, that's Here's not hard to do. Piece of clear acetate. I'm gonna put this over. I'm gonna lay this. So now it'll stick to this rather than my finger, so I can adjust it more easily. But I still need to get my head over it. Oh, this is a booger. Come on. You're telling me that is not right, Nance. There we go. I'm going to pick that one up. You still not getting it? Nope. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Okay, I figured Kinda. it out. That was so dumb of me. Okay, you want to explain to the rest of the Let me share my seeker. Secret. Okay. All right, see how the bottom has this darker layer? It's kind of curved. And then the lighter okay. layer underneath. Mm -hmm. Line up the bottom with the darker layer. Okay. So this is where you would write a note in your stamp set so that when you do it again next time. Yeah. That seems to be the correct way. But let me not put my head in camera here and just double check that. Oh, yeah. And there are little, my air bubbles all line up when I do that. do notes. <laughs> your air bubbles. <laughs> you'll see when you have to stamp it out i will have to yes i have to make a note i yeah. find so some of those are easier than others for sure i believe that i had it too low before and i just had to line up this line of grass with the bottom of layer three stamp let's stamp it out again and see if it works I'm going to do icing on the cake on this one on the outside. Spirit Junkie is going to give you a vote because I'm so competitive. Uh, it's awesome. Give her all your sympathy votes. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Like she said, I'm hosting next Listen, Stamp Wars. So. We all know if Ryan were playing, it wouldn't even be a discussion. <laughs> Mm -hmm. he will be playing so, next one so the fact that i can you know squeak one in i'm going to enjoy it as much as i can i guess i was just really surprised that you squeaked one in <laughs> let's see um, that still doesn't look right but we're gonna dark. go with it because it looks better than it did last time i did it oh my god we're gonna go with it i don't think it's messed up enough to make a big deal about that kind of worked. Okay. Last layer is the actual grapes. What color grapes they, are you going to have? They go in the bubbles. See, I know where the grapes go. They go in yeah, the air bubbles. Yeah, those. Those are easy. Um, well, I don't know. What color are wine grapes? Aren't they like a Merlot color? They this color. Chianti. There you go. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to put my craft paper in there. I'm going to just stamp down. Jen says, use an eraser to move your stamps around and the stamp won't stick. Great tip, Jen. If it works. <laughs> yeah, she said it does. <laughs> I will have to see. An eraser. Okay, yeah, I can see how that probably actually would work, so... Let me stamp that again. I'm using um, I'm using my craft cardstock to make boulders. And I'm going to oh, use my die cut. So let's see how that works. Okay, so we've got. Um, Nancy, may I ask you how you like the new Stampin' Up trimmer? Um, we'll talk about that. I and have then, a love-hate relationship with it. 
Me too. I don't like hers. I don't, I'll just say, I have the one that was the prior, the version prior to what Nancy got hers anymore. Right. Which I don't like it. I don't like the one she has because there's features on it that have been removed. And I'm like, really? Um, Jen, no, Kim in Alaska asked if there were sour grapes, Nancy, did you get the joke? (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, I have the sour grapes. I'm the one that's losing. Okay. Okay. So now I'll show you guys how I prep my dyes. The sentiments on here are cute. It says, I love enjoy your special day, sending an abundance of joy, and then shop, stop and smell the rose. And I am so grateful. Aw, cute. Very cute. Very cute. And I love that this has little houses and trees you can add on here. There mm-hmm. is a little picnic bench and a little um, thing. I'm going to kind of copy what they have up here. They're all yeah. interchangeable too between the the size yeah, the size with the other kits. Yes. Yep. Like so that. you can use kind of why I got all of the kits is because of that reason specifically. Is like I wanted to be able to use like the airplane from one and another, you know, stuff like that. Um okay, so just to give you guys some info. So these are vent covers. They're magnetic vent covers that you can get from like Home Depot or Lowe's. And I use these in a binder, a three ring binder to hold all of my die cuts, my dies, not my die cuts, my dies. And I have pieces left over from when I cut them down. So I'll literally take this. I could probably get three on here. Yeah. And so I'll cut this down. And I just have a pile of these scraps sitting over on the other side of my room. Let me go grab one more. I have one that's almost the same size. And then you just gotta make sure you have the magnetic side because one side's magnetic and the other side isn't so much. So like this one is not the right side. That is the right side. So it's up, up, up. Okay. And it's up and it's up and it's up. Okay, Cardi B, mm-hmm. sorry, my head. And then I'm going to just put some double sided tape. Pop that down. It's a hot air balloon. Yes. Make sure I didn't flip it over. And there you go. Now that'll just go back in there because now I'm going to cut all these apart. Because I got to use the frame. The one piece I need is the one that's connecting everything together. Although I need my boulders too. Such a nice day today. I went and washed and vacuumed and cleaned my truck, which was fun. And then... um, came back and I was like, oh, I should go clean the other vehicles, but I didn't. I'll do those tomorrow. But I was like, oh, I should go set up my patio outside. Like I have a little um, canopy thing. I I bought a new canopy cover for this year. And um, I got a, I got a propane. I've been wanting a pro, I have a fire, a little fire pit thing. Like when you put like firewood in, and um, it's really old and it was like rusting out of the bottom. So I bought a propane one this year, my little gift to myself. And I ordered some new patio furniture because I haven't had nice patio furniture in a really long time. And uh, that stupid lawnmower I bought last year, I'm not even going to waste money on that. I'm just going to um, sell that online. And so I'm kind of looking forward to it warming up and being able to enjoy outside with the kids again and I'm still upset about not being able to go fishing at my little lake, but everything happens for a reason. So, not gonna complain, not gonna cry. 
on your live at least. <laughs> right, exactly. I'll wait till later. All right. So this came with little clouds. I stamped those in cummerbund. And yes, I'm going to put the little hot air balloon. I did the houses. I did the trees. I'm going to do the little hot air balloon right here because that's where I have an ink smudge. <laughs> <laughs> so when people ask, why did you put that there? <laughs> we have a uh, I messed up. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use this one. I mess up a lot. I'm just really good at cleaning up my mistakes. Right? That is... That is a craft in itself, being able to fix the mistakes, make it look like they were never there in the first place. Okay, and I need this one. Ta -da! What ink smudge? <laughs> Ran out of tape. Hmm. We're deep in thought. Yes. Are you using your die cut at all? You're not doing any die cuts. I now. don't do die cutting. I'm one layer stamper. <laughs> <sighs> well, I well, had I try to. not to. Okay. Well, I'm going to run this through my vagabond. Be right back. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Okay. Here in Italy, the wind is very cold. Erica, here in Arizona, the wind is warm. It's nasty. It's like 80. Oh, degrees. I love Italy, Erica. I got to go to, my son was seven months old. So 2000, how old is he? 2007 in the fall, we went to Italy and we went to, obviously we went to Rome and I wanted to go see Pompeii because I studied Latin for four years. And then we went to, Oh gosh. We went in the mountains. I can't think of the part of it. Naples. We went to Naples. Oh, it was so pretty. So beautiful. <clears throat> I was a little disappointed in Pompeii oh, just because I had read so much about the history of it and with school and everything, but um, I really loved how beautiful Naples was. Yes. Beautiful. And of course we ate a lot of gelato. I have never had gelato. Is this a super creamy ice cream? It doesn't sound good to me. I don't know why. It just it's very me. fatty. <laughs> very, mm -hmm. very creamy. Smooth, smooth, smooth texture. Okay. I think what I need to do is I'm gonna need to make a beach, but I don't want to do that. America's in Tuscany. Beautiful. all right so i stamped sending an abundance of joy and i'm gonna put this in a stamp envelope since i have the stamp set open i like these avery l envelopes i purchased the cheaper ones off of amazon and the sides end up splitting on me and i hate that so um i like these the avery l ones are the ones that i found for me work the best you can get a three pack on amazon for like i want to say 30 some dollars it's really not too bad but i like these. these are the extra large ones for the hero arts kits gene i'm coming fishing just get me a fishing license aaron lives over there by a lake in michigan See, now that one's all done. This is pretty much done. All right, let's talk about this Stampin' Up! trimmer and how I honestly feel about it. <laughs> I have a love-hate with it, and I'll tell you why. 
Um, I needed a big trimmer and I do have a big tonic trimmer under my desk, but it is huge. Okay. For like 12 by 12 papers. That's the one I use like scrapbooking papers and things like that. So I did get the Stampin' Up trimmer because one, I am a Stampin' Up demonstrator. And when we do Stampin' Up videos, we're only supposed to show Stampin' Up stuff. So they frown upon using other products. If you guys saw my video review on the tonic trimmer I did a few years ago, I gave it raving reviews. And I still think this is a very good trimmer. The issues that I have had with my past trimmers is that this arm is supposed to stop here. My arm kept going. And mm -hmm. the other issues I had were that sometimes this gets knocked off of alignment and the, it would stop. Like it would just, the blades wouldn't line up and it would just become really hard to use. So I have gone through five of these, I think. And people say, well, if it's broken, why do you keep buying it? Because of the size, <laughs> it's very lightweight. It does cut well, but the size is perfect that it literally fits right in front of me. I have a little shelf in front of me. It fits perfectly. And for general A4 card making, it does the, the sizes that I want. And everybody's like, well, stop buying if it doesn't work, you know? So I did seek out a new trimmer and I went with the sliding trimmer for Stampin' Up. And I do like this for a couple of reasons. One, it does have this little slide out ruler. So if I have to cut an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, or lately I've been doing slim line cards, this is perfect for cutting those sheets down. It's super light. It's not real heavy. It does have this kind of uh, guide door. And then it has a cutting blade and it has a scoring blade, which is great when you're making card bases. What I don't like about it is basically two things. One, there's a little hole right here, which you can pull the blade out. So you can see there. And so very often the blade jumps and it comes out of that little hole. Okay. So I just think that's a bad place for the hole. It should be kind of up and out of the way. I think when I'm as a right-hander holding this and cutting with it, and when it hits that little open spot there, the blade does kind of pop out, okay? The other thing I don't like is when you are putting this blade black back in, which I didn't find out until the hard way, is that the blade has a particular direction. So there's an actual arrow on there. And if you put your blade in backwards, or you cut it backwards, it does not cut as well. So I don't like that. I think that, um, those are the two things that bother me the most. Every once in a while, this door doesn't want to come over. There's a latch on here to kind of keep this shut. I think that's inconvenient. I'm sure there's some place where I can kind of shave that down um, or with where it will go down. And I don't like that it leaves, who was posting the other day, fuzzies. You know, when you cut through something and your blade is starting to go dull. So here, look, it already jumped out of the thing, just jumped out of the hole. So I got to put it back I don't have that issue with mine so much with the blade popping out. So there it cuts fine when you are going straight, but it does tend to leave little fuzzies and I can feel the blade presses down on the paper where with the guillotine trimmer, it doesn't do that. So there's a small lip on the paper where it cuts. It's just personal preference. That's super annoying. Cause if I mess up this side of the paper and I have to now stamp or color on this side of the paper, I can feel this lip. It's like putting the sheets on wrong on your bed. Like you just know this is cut down. <laughs> That side of the paper needs to go down. So if I try to cut backwards with the trimmer, see how that struggled there? Because I cut in the opposite direction. It didn't even cut all the way through. So that's how I thought my blade needed to be replaced. No, my blade didn't need to be replaced. I just put it in wrong because I didn't realize there was a little directional arrow on it. Yeah, because so, the old one doesn't have that. No, the old ones were multi-directional. Now, if you cut mm -hmm. forward, and then cut backwards, it cuts fine. But if you accidentally put your blade in wrong or you try to pull it instead of pushing it, it's just not, it's not very, it'll touch, it, it just feels rough. And you're like, uh oh, I need a new blade. No, you don't need a new blade. Just check the direction of it. See that? So I found that by accident. <clears throat> But I like the scoring part. I like the size of it. It sits up on the side of my desk like this. Um, so I use both of them just depending on what I'm doing. Generally for regular card fronts, I'm using the guillotine trimmer. When I'm cutting eight and a half by 11 paper, um, or if I have to do like six by six cards or five by seven, then I'll, you'll see me reach for this depending on what size I need to cut. So neither one of them is perfect, 
but for what I need for both of them, they, they work. I hate that I have to have two trimmers to get what I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only reason I use that trimmer is when I'm cutting eight and a half, um, you know, 12 by 12 paper. Yeah. That's the only time I use it. Yep. Um, I'm not even joking you guys. So on the right of me, there's a little Michael's one, two, three, four shelf. I'll show you. It's a little four shelf thing. So, okay. So the, I have these two tremors and then I have the big, big mama under my desk, which is the, the super tonic. I'll show you that one. I wasn't going to spend a hundred dollars on a cutter P cutter B, whatever that thing's called cutter pillar trimmer. So I was able to find this one on sale. I think when tonic was switching their colors from orange to green, they switched their colors, right? So I was able to get this one on sale and this one works great. It's a great guillotine trimmer. I've never had a problem with it. It's super big and it cuts all my paper like a dream, but it's just heavy and it's big. So it's under the desk. Um, so let's, let's just go through Nancy's little trimmer habit and keep in mind over the years, I've given away trimmers and given Leah trimmers and thrown away trimmers. So we have this Fiskars, which is basically the same one as the Stampin' Up one, which I got for free as part of a Stampin' Up demonstrator, but it's basically the same trimmer. It's a tiny little bitty trimmer. And then I have this one, which is, this one has like little, uh, Settings like deckle edge and scoring and and all that pretty stuff, which Stacy reminded me of because she got the new Tim Holtz deckle edge. And I'm like, wait a minute, I have something similar to that. So you just you switch your blades and then you use this, but it doesn't like have any place for the paper to sit. It has rulers, but your paper kind of sags down. That one. And I have my original Big Mama, which I still like this one. This is a Fisker's rotary one. Um, but I like this. This one was probably one of the best blades I've ever owned. These rotary ones go forever. And this just pops open. I can remember how to do it. And then you pull the blade out and you can change these to deco blades or straight blades. But this one, these blades do kind of last forever and they cut super smooth. And I like the metal guide. Um, so this one is a nice old tried and true one. Here's another one of my old Tim Holtz ones. Here's a cutter, an old cuttered P. Again, another kind of rotary one. And then I have another Tim Holtz one under there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trimmers currently at my side. <laughs> Over the last, what, 20 years of scrapbooking slash card making. Is that all? Hmm. Only, yeah. That's it. And I don't know why I have the old ones, because clearly I don't use any of them anymore. I just have them, <laughs> which I'm sure many of you can relate. <laughs> Well, sometimes people come over, I used to do card, um, like people would come over and we would do uh, card making, like Saturdays we would do like my Stampin' Up! team would come over, obviously with COVID that's not happening. So it is nice to have a couple trimmers available for when those people come over. Here's my card, Tracy. I'm going to cut it down for you. Tracy? Um, no, Tracy said I want to see it. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. Fine, be that way. <laughs> oh, it's already? No. Okay, I'm going to do five and a quarter by four. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just clean up my edges here a little bit. I'm just adding finishing touches to mine. Where's my other surfer? Do? Uh, let's put the person on the beach instead. All right, and then I've got rocks, boulders, those things. <clears throat> and I'm gonna color that in a little bit. Okay. 
and I just put this. Yeah, it's, you know, when you start with this hobby, you buy, I believe most people buy inexpensive things thinking, okay, let's see if this works. And then as we get more in tune with this hobby, we find out that, um, you know, some of the budget friendly options are probably not the best options. So then we Mm -hmm. buy more expensive things. And so that's really how it started is I just, I bought a lot of them. They didn't work great. So I bought another one and I bought another one. I bought another one. Well, now that I know, okay, it's like my foiling, you know, we all kind of start with a laminator and then work our way into a mink. Um, and you know, we buy the inexpensive deco foil and then we work our way up into textile foil and it's the same kind of thing. So I think with the trimmers, now I know that those two trimmers that I have are the two that I'm going to reach for. I will probably never, ever use the other trimmers again. And uh, yeah, I use my Gemini Junior all the time. So I only have my big shot just for sentimental reasons. And I use the other one for the Spellbinders Glimmer Machine. It's not really used for die cutting. It's used for hot foiling. Jerry says, Stacy, I love how you did your sand with the cardstock. It looks perfect. Thank you. All done. Well, not all done. I'm going to mount it. <clears throat> yes, Darlene. She said, it's nice to have extra just in case people do come over. Yes, I do. I do miss that a little bit. That's definitely though why I have extra. The reason I have extra though is the whole reason of, you know, you, you try and be thrifty with your money and get a trimmer that, you know, you can afford. And then you realize that it's a scrap. <laughs> Yeah. So. And then you try another one that's just a little bit more expensive. And that too is yes. a good scrap. And then you end yes. up getting the one that you should have gotten the first yes. place. Yep. So, so I, I still endorse the Tim Holtz trimmer. I just wish that they would fix those two issues. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that has those issues. Um, it's just really annoying. Okay, I'm done. You've done with what? Everything? My card. (laughs) It's on a card base and everything. Here, I'm going to use my decal trimmer and I'm going to cut this down. (laughs) Got a hair. Let's see here. I'm going to sponge some blue ink into the sky a little bit. Try not to smudge anything in case it's not dry. Mostly the black ink is what I'm worried about. Okay, now I'm done. That's two layers of paper is a little bit rough. I'm almost done. We are going to be wrapping it up here shortly. Just saying. So Yeah, because I need snacks. I don't know what I want for dinner. I have not eaten at dinner either yet i don't think i ate lunch either did i eat lunch today i don't remember i wonder what this yes i did i had some korean it's called yakimandu which is basically like korean dumplings does that look good with the wood grain i think your card pops it looks amazing i like it do you like with the wood grain though or should i I think a wood grain is like black pants it goes with everything the darker wood grain (laughs) which wood grain I've got five to choose from. <laughs> that you can't even tell it's wood grain. I'm, not, I'm thinking the grays probably aren't going to pop so much now. So it's going to be. Tracy's like, yes. I think the darker one looks better. Let's go with the dark. I do like the darker. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. It's like scissors. I'm kind of going that way with scissors now, too. So, (laughs) those are the oh, no, you don't have the ones I have. I'm almost done. And then there's how about tape runners? You want to go tape runners? (laughs) 
I have, yeah. So I'm. Oh my to gosh! One. I have one. I have a drawer. I have a drawer full of tape runners. My, I've now that I've been doing this for so long, I've whittled it down to my favorite trimmers, glue, tape runner, inks. Now this is I my favorite. I, I think I found my favorite paper. I don't want to announce it yet because I'm still testing it out. Yeah. Um, this but, is my uh, favorite tape runner, but I have a drawer full of them that I've tried and I always was like, it just doesn't stick. It like comes undone. This one does not come undone. If you want a permanent. Oh, that's great. That's my favorite permanent yes. sticky stuff. And yeah. I, I don't really have a need for repositionable so much. So <laughs> I love the dome blenders, Darlene. I, I have been an advocate of them since I started using them. In fact, I don't use the flat ones anymore. I have the flat ones just in case, but I've replaced all of my colors with these domed ones. I believe the Ranger ones are exactly the same as the scrapbook.com ones, so wherever you can find them. But I, I wholeheartedly like these better for a number of reasons. So I like those and the blender brushes in two different applications. The blender brushes, I believe, are a much lighter application, and it's easier for you if you want to layer color and go slowly and just get into the deep, dark colors that you want. With the um, domed applicators, you get that dark color pretty much instantly. It just holds more ink. Also, it doesn't leave any harsh lines like the flat ones do. So if you have any of these flat ones and you can buy they, they work on the same handles so you don't need to buy new handles you just buy this replacement foam pack this is a 10 pack um but i've replaced all of my flat ones with these domed ones and i exclusively use the domed ones so yes i do like these better yep uh the tape runners that i use are yes the extreme tape runner is my favorite when it's putting anything heavy down so mm -hmm. Um, any kind of embellishments, anything super heavy. This is like super glue in a tape form. I love this mm -hmm. stuff. Well, 100% stand. You're doing heavy cards or you're doing cards that don't take adhesive well, like foil card or textured burlap or anything like that. These are great. This is a great tape runner. I love this. The secret to this is when you get to the end, you have to flick it. And if you don't flick it, it doesn't break off properly. Let me show you. So what yeah, you do you pull it down and when you get to the bottom, you flick yes. to the right and then you it have will, to, yes, you have to flick exactly. it. If you don't flick it, it will just keep going and it'll just keep going. And, or, yeah. Or the next time you go, it's like a whole empty space and you're like right. trying to get it to go. Yeah, let's look at how that pulled my paper apart. That glue will never come off. It just, it rips your paper mm -hmm. before it comes off. So it was great for I, heavy embellishments too. I had to move some of the cards I made for John, which, you know, some of them were like over a year old and I was moving them and stuff was falling off of them because I used like other tape runners when I first started. Cause I was trying to use something other than the liquid glue, but this is my number one. If I need something, yep. if I, yeah, this is, yes. I'm always using liquid glue. Yeah. Mine's done. Me too. Me too. Me too. I love the, uh, art glitter glue because it dries fast and then this is my big tape runner you'll see me mostly use this when I'm doing scrapbooking pages because I need a lot of glue at one time I get these well I used to get them at Hobby Lobby because it was three for 20 some dollars and you could use your 40 percent off coupon but now they're, they're not doing that I don't know what I'm gonna do but this is just easy you just pull it out put it back in when you're ready to replace it Nancy let so me I see your card use this on scrapbooking I never got to see your card let me see your card here you go Oh, that's cute. Thank you for sending it to me. You're welcome. Now I know what to do. Now I know what to do too. This I, like good. I wish I were at the beach right now. See, that's is why that I me? I you do this is that time. me laying there yeah. on the towel? Yeah. Right okay. there. I love it. Look how yeah. dark I am. I need some sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the shadows. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I did lose a stamp though. Look, I'm missing this little dang bird. It, it would not stay. And now I can't find it. It's somewhere on my desk. Hopefully it's stuck on the back of some plastic acetate somewhere. Um, possibly. Yes. Let me look. Hold on. Is it on here? No, because I had this on there. All right. Well, oh, let's oh, see guys, here. these are the two stamp sets Thanks, we played with. You can pick these up at scrapbook.com or you can go directly through hero arts either one and um you can use either trace or stacy's or i link at scrapbook.com it doesn't matter and i always do recommend the dies with these um 
even though it, you can use your scan and cut because these are so, uh, I will say intricate with the way their designs are for me, it's harder for the scan and cut to pick it mm -hmm. up. So the die, you can get the kit. The dies are inexpensive when you get it together with the kit. So, um, it's just nice. Like what Stacy did when you stamp all those dark colors, when you layer it, like I'll probably go back and stamp these two and cut them out and glue them over just so that you don't have that green background on there. So there we go. Nope, not under my stamp pads. I'm still looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody said, look under your stamp pad. <laughs> well, thanks for doing a live with me. Well, I feel bad because it was Tracy, you know, it was all Tracy's fault, but. Well, she doesn't feel good. So she'll, no. she'll do a live with me. I know next Saturday. And so will Ryan and so will Chow and so will you. And That's so right. will Lisa from local King River Stamps. Under my card. Nope. So it'll turn um, up when she's putting everything away. Yeah, I just have to make sure I check everything before I put it away. Because yeah, I don't know where the heck it went. I didn't the put bottom, it on the stamp bottom block. of your stamp platform. I looked. Um, mm, no, that's got foam bottom. I don't think it would stick to that. Yeah. But I'll check. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks. I had fun, and you're welcome, Tracy. She said thanks for doing the live. Um, it worked out. It just happened to work out with my timing with my life at the moment. So I'm really glad I was able to hang out with, with Nancy and you guys can now go play the game show will it foil with your own stuff <laughs> well thanks for hanging out guys if you enjoyed hanging yes. out with us please give us a thumbs up if you're not subscribed to either channel I will link Stacy's channel down below for you guys don't forget she has a giveaway coming up um, if you watch our stamp wars 10 video we each did a separate video uh follow up to stamp wars 10 and that will be the giveaway video so we're going to have prizes to give away next saturday we're always giving things away if you join our foiling snobs club on facebook you don't have to just do foiling we do all things crafty related it's a very fun group um so yeah check us out i'll put all the links down below for everything that we used thanks for watching guys don't forget the thumbs up Bye. Bye. Bye, Stace. Bye, Nance.